<laughs> so it's 10 o'clock at night where you are. Yeah, it is. It's kind of late. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I didn't want to have to, like, make you wake up at 6 a.m. to do an interview with me. <laughs> I, You know, I've done some of those. It really, <laughs> it's it's fine. I don't mind. I've done, I've done enough of the at this point that you could have oh yeah i get up at two in the morning you go, all right you do? Do when do you sleep so what um, oh no i'm no i don't i don't i only do uh, maybe an interview a week maybe two at tops yeah. so that's not so bad <laughs> and and internationally although it's weird because recently uh, i've done a number of international ones but that's fine uh, the, <laughs> This is this one is new because I don't know much. I had to look it up. I don't know much about it. Is it the Sorbonne? Yeah, it's called the Sorbonne. <laughs> yeah, it's more of an Ooh. open O <laughs> for the pronunciation. An open O. <laughs> yeah, Sorbonne. <laughs> so, so how did you uh, how did you run into my stuff? Uh, the Netflix documentary. Ah, uh, I was in. It's funny you'd mention that because I was in Belfast. Yeah. And I was doing a public speaking thing there and three French girls walked up to me and they thought I was French. <laughs> I said, why why would you think that? And she goes because we cuz they watched a version that was dubbed in French. Oh, in French. right. <laughs> I don't know if you watched the English version or apparently um, the French yeah, version. I did. Yes. I never watch anything English dubbed in French. Got it. Got it. So I said no. Nope, nope. Anyway, because when I was younger, I couldn't read the subtitles fast enough. Now I don't even use the subtitles. <laughs> <laughs> when you were younger, how old are you now? I'm 22. <laughs> it's to say, when you were younger. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, young lady, you don't know what, what young is. <laughs> no, that's awesome. So what's, uh, what do you want to do? What do you want to ask? Wait, uh, so do? I thought what's, maybe, what's the project about anyway? Yes. So I was going to obviously start with my project. So I'm in my second year of uh, my master's degree. Mm -hmm. So at the Sorbonne, which is pretty much like the big U French university, like the most famous one. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, ever since I watched the Netflix documentary, like three years ago, I think. Uh, three years ago? <laughs> I think, I think. Well, that's, so. that's right. That it was out three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just surprised that uh, you didn't decide to do this as a project until now. Uh, I did actually. Um, it's my second year of working on the subject of conspiracy theories. So I watched oh. it three years ago and then I decided that it would be the uh, topic of my, uh, my thesis. My, uh, it's not a dissertation, it's the, like the, the stage right before that. Right. And uh, yeah, so it's my second year working on it and I'm super excited to be talking to you because technically you're the reason I'm doing this. <laughs> hey, I'll take it. Awesome. No, that, no, really, that's great. Anything, anything to help? Uh, I don't think I've said no to any student projects ever. That's true. So, really well, why why would I? It's like, look, you if you guys are going out of your way to spend the time on it, why wouldn't I want to participate? Well, you could be taking the risk of um, no, being, like your word being um, misinterpreted or like reused in a number. Oh, of ways come on! Like the the, the mainstream media. Off. <laughs> yeah, no, no, the mainstream media has done that a lot. Well, have the, doc <laughs> the, the documentary did that. The, the documentary, people don't know, uh, they hated us by mm -hmm. the time they were done shooting that thing. Mm -hmm. I spent people seven months with me? that group. Oh, yeah. They, they did not, not only were none of the people producing or directing or anything else tied to Flat Earth in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. But by the time we got to that conference, they were set against it. We're like, nope, nope, it's a cult, <laughs> it's it's an anti-science thing. And yeah. the, the the big kicker was if you remember in the documentary, there was this uh 12 year old boy who came up to the microphone and was asking me questions. Yeah. And I did not know until I was listening to the iTunes director's cut version, mm -hmm. the the director's commentary, yeah, that once that kid walked up to the microphone, they changed. It's like, okay, 
we can't have kids involved with this. We we have <laughs> got to spin this. But the movie was already done. Most you know, yeah. most of the shooting is already. So they had to lean against us as hard as they could, and they did. But it backfired in the end because it made audiences feel safe to watch it. It's mm -hmm. not like you were watching a, a flat Earth propaganda film. Yeah, sure. You were watch you were watching something from both sides, and yeah. I, that, that helped. That's, that's part of what I really liked about this documentary. Yeah, 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 yeah. It wasn't pure, use the, the drug reference. It wasn't pure, uncut, flat earth. Mm -hmm. It was flat earth, flat earth, scientist, flat earth, flat earth, yeah. astronaut, flat earth, flat earth, psychologist. Yeah. And, and, I, and I know this because I sat with some of the theater audiences, mm -hmm. you know, with a hat and sunglasses. Yeah. And I watched, watched them and they were like, uh, it's freaking out. Okay, it's safe. There's a scientist on screen. <laughs> uh, no, no. Oh, look, there's Neil deGrasse Tyson. We're fine. <laughs> And they would go this back and forth and back and forth and and people don't understand that psychologically that actually has more of an effect on them than anything because if it was all flat earth they just brace against it mm -hmm. but every time a scientist came on screen they let their guard down yeah so by the time the movie was over a hundred minutes later mm -hmm. they were fully engaged in that yeah. and they had so many questions that i mean the the theaters that i went to that they knew i was there i couldn't they had to kick us out of the theater because people wouldn't stop coming up to me asking me questions. Like, great, fantastic. So in the end, it helped us a great deal. So, so yeah, my project. Um, um, I'm not really interested in the. Uh, so last year, I had to do mostly theoretical work, and just like uh, do this kind of uh summing up what has been said on conspiracy theories, but like on the on the researcher side of things. Mm -hmm. And so this year I'm continuing this, but I'm taking more liberties. So that's why I'm talking to you, uh, partly why. And yep. so my argument is that um, conspiracy theories and the theorists aren't bad for society at all. Like it's been so widely depicted and um, demonstrated. Because most, most of the literature on conspiracy theories tends to say that it's anti-democratic, that it's dangerous, yeah. terrorist, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. And surely yeah. there are some who are that way, but not most of them. And so my point is to argue that conspiracy theories actually bring people together in, an, in a healthy way. And that in that way, it's more democratic than most of the political parties who don't do this anymore. There have been many studies um, who showed that like in the 1990s, uh, there was no social fabric anymore. And that um, it's actually a really good book if you wanna look at it, it by Robert Putnam, it's called Bowling Alone. And it uh, the whole argument of the book is to say that um, there's no social fabric anymore, that the American, so it's uh, on America, obviously. And it says that um, the Americans don't come together as a, as a society anymore. And so I see and try to argue in my thesis that um, conspiracy theories and the people who believe in them and elaborate them do just that. They create social fabric again. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So that's my project. <laughs> that, that is a one. No, it's a wonderful project. Well thought out. And your ex explanation of it was very clear. Thank you. Which <laughs> is, uh, and, you, and you're right. You, I think you're right on all points. Mm -hmm. um, let's, well, let's start. You know what? Let's just go into yeah, the interview. Your, 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 your bullet points. Let's do that. I have, so I have a good questions. So first, can you tell me about your past, any school you went to or job or anything you feel is important in your journey? Right. Oh, the journey. Uh, all of it was important, but the most relevant ones were that I grew up very naive. I grew up in a very <laughs> sheltered environment up on an island in the corner of the United States, almost in Canada. Yeah. Uh, up, up, up near Seattle. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I believed, like many of the people in the United States, mm -hmm. that everything on the news and everything in mainstream media is absolutely objective and true. Mm -hmm. Why would I? And I never questioned it because why would I? No one would ever lie to me. Of course, I was growing up in the 80s, yeah. <laughs> which was absolutely blissfully wonderful by comparison to like even the two early 2000s. Yeah. So... 
And then finally, I went to university, my first university, which was a, a school five hours away on the other side of Washington. Mm -hmm. And that and I was I graduated early, probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, I was I was 16. So what <laughs> you was know. your major? The what? Your major at university? Oh, oh, that was just in the 80s. No, nobody had freaking unless you were <laughs> a lawyer or a doctor or engineer. <laughs> You didn't have majors. <laughs> both, okay. the, the bulk, the bulk of the students did not care. I mean, again, remember, it was very cheap to go to school. Okay. Uh, and the the attitude was like, well, what, what was the? There's a T-shirt for the '80s, and that is, uh, no clue and no backup plan. <laughs> like we just we just went out, just went out and and did whatever. And then our careers kind of developed after university, to be quite honest. University for a lot of us was just learning what the different professions were. <laughs> Meaning you went there and it's like, oh, this seems interesting. Oh, this seems interesting. And then through your social contacts, you, you might get into it and you might not. But very few people that I knew that even had a major stuck with their major, opposed to now, okay. where it's like you, you've got to be committed right off the bat. Yeah, that's we a changed, problem, definitely. <laughs> yeah, we changed majors like some people change socks. It was it was so easy. So anyway, uh, I drank my first year. I basically partied my first year because I didn't know what I, you know what I was doing. That and sounds then, like a town college experience. <laughs> yeah, first year, and then I switched schools because I couldn't even I couldn't use anything. My grades were horrible. I went to a fraternity. Right off the bat, which was probably even a worse thing because they promoted the social aspect over. I mean, you you had forced social engagements. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 we have parties on Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, but I have to study. No, we have parties on Wednesdays and you have it to. Kinda, it reminds me kind of like uh, I have friends who are like in, uh, in like high end business schools and it's kind of like the same. Like the ritual parties every that yep. day, every certain day of the week. Yep, usually Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Usually. I hear that That's now things have changed. Things have changed. It's Thursdays now that are in for <laughs> parties. <Thursdays. laughs> Whatever. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I can see that. So anyway, uh, the the final university I ended up at, I didn't even know, for example, that there was more than one religion until I got there. You know, it's like, well, if you grow up in a Christian environment, a very strong Christian environment, they don't talk about the other people. They don't talk about Judaism and Hinduism and Buddhism. So that, and, that was your case? You grew up in a, in a very Christian household? Yeah, very, very Christian, uh, evangelical type thing. Christian uh, Church was not just a Sunday thing. Mm -hmm. It was vacation Bible school. It was Sunday school. It was youth group. I went to uh, a, a fairly famous Christian camp up in British Columbia. Mm -hmm. uh, called Camp Malibu. It was wonderful. So, so I, my eyes started getting opened quickly when I, when I got to school, but at the same time, there were no conspiracies. The internet hadn't fired up yet. The internet wouldn't even yeah. be fired up for another eight, nine years. Yeah. So the first one the, my first exposure to it at all was JFK, the movie mm -hmm. by Oliver Stone. Just a, his, his, the brilliant opus he'll probably go down as his finest work mm -hmm. and except for of course his academy academy award-winning platoon but that was a vietnam <laughs> war that's been done that's only he only he did jfk mm -hmm. and i remember seeing that in a packed theater and it was a three-hour freaking movie yeah. and it was one of the first movies if ever that i walked out of the whole crowd was quiet and angry when they walked out, it wasn't like your usually movie, you know, it's like, Oh, isn't that a great movie? Everybody yeah. throw out our popcorn and stuff. Oh no. People were really upset. And I all of a sudden realized as I was going through this, it's like, wait, people do lie at higher levels. There are levels of deception. And then, then the internet fired up and when you start when the internet was new way before your time, you know, there wasn't much on there. And so there was a few conspiracy sites here and there, but the big one that happened after that was uh, 9 11 mm -hmm. back in 2001. Then the conspiracy machine just went into freaking overdrive because people, it was the first time high speed internet was just starting to, to come up and people around the world were starting to, I know I said around the world, but don't equate that for, with non flat earth stuff. People in different countries, how's that? 
that we're starting to compare notes at very, very fast rates. Beforehand, if you wanted to do conspiracy stuff, you had to go to conventions that were catering to conspiracies. And usually those are UFO conventions, mm -hmm. which is a whole nother group of people. So which don't I identify as um, participating in? Who, me? Yeah, in the UFO. Oh, UFO conventions? Yeah. No, but I knew people that did. And I knew... Uh, and I was a fan of the concept. Mm -hmm. I, I loved it. But where it kind of tied in was, was anyone that believed in UFOs was already skeptical of anything NASA ever said. Because if you're into UFOs, it'd be like, well, NASA is obviously hiding the, the fact about spaceships and aliens. Mm -hmm. like, All right, that's fine. Uh, but 9-11 was a real serious thing for the conspiracy world. because, And it became, even, even now, uh, with some conspiracy people, it's considered the top of the pyramid in the conspiracy world. There is no bigger conspiracy than 9-11. I'm going, well, I don't know if that's true. I mean, yeah, thousands of people died, but it, there's I can show you all sorts of conspiracies that are more involved or more sinister, I think. I mean, the, but 9-11 was, was more of a, uh, for me, it was more of a way to get into the Middle East, which mm -hmm. was, look, America, we take things <laughs> and we will make up reasons to take things. And so if we need to get into the Middle East, well, we have to create a reason to go there. What better way? One of the oldest tricks in the book is to walk up to your friend on the playground or wherever, hit him in the back of the head, and when they turn around, you point at the guy next to you. Yeah. It's the, one of the oldest tricks in the book, and it works it's all the time. And what do you think your, your guy's going to do? He's going to turn around. He's going to go exactly where you're pointing, and he's going to start punching that guy, right? Imagine that on a large scale. You can do that anytime you want. You can, you can launch an attack on any country and manufacture evidence and anyway mm -hmm. so once i got into that uh, once i got into the the 911 stuff cuz i was in my uh, your age i uh, then i started looking into just about every conspiracy you could think of and over the course of 20 years eh, 15 years 15 years i'd covered just about every conspiracy i have an opinion on just about everything Mm -hmm. And you saw that in the documentary. I was bored. It's like, all right, is there anything I haven't looked at, which I thought was strange? I was like, oh, yeah, there's this flat earth thing. In fact, I wasn't even looking at flat earth when I got into it. I was looking into hollow earth, mm -hmm. which, was a, which was a whole different animal. And I looked at, finally looked at flat earth and it went down this other rabbit trail and I couldn't solve it. And it was this weird, weird, well, anyway, that's a whole nother, it's another trail. But but my upbringing of being naive, being uh, you know, being Christian environment, and then getting into conspiracies rather quickly was uh, a key in the the other thing was because I, I was I was pretty open minded mm -hmm. for a lot. My parents really encouraged that to you know to be open minded. Uh, don't don't just dig in your heels of course everyone's hypocritical we we dig in our heels for some things and not other things mm -hmm. but i was open to this because why not it's like all right it, it seems innocent enough the the reason why the flyers community is so big and so diverse is because it's not sinister like other conspiracies sure it, it, i don't care if you're talking about the the reichstag fire or pearl harbor or 9 11 or the moon mm -hmm. landings or or in the Panama Canal or any sort of genocide, all these things are tied to man. You know, they're tied to us. It's like we created them. And where the flat earth isn't, we had nothing to do with the building of this place. We're just keeping the secret. So it's less sinister, which is why warm women, for example, um, the average conspiracy group is n at least 90% men. Mm -hmm. 90, but when you get into flat earth, mm, it's high 60s in my opinion, maybe low 70s. There's a lot more women. I, I've gone to many a meetup where it's proved it out, conferences, lots of women. Mm -hmm. Because there's um, it's got this weird message of hope to it. Message uh, of hope? Anyway, sorry. The what? Message of hope? Message of hope, meaning, again, from the Christian side, if it was built, if you're living in a structure, a building, then it was mm -hmm. built by someone. Well, yeah. it was built by someone, it was created by something. It's like, okay, at that point, it's either an older civilization that's much more advanced than ourselves or some sort of deity, but really, aren't they almost the same thing? Mm -hmm. And so, and again, men, and it's, it's not this sinister wearing black hats, twirling your mustache type of, type of thing where women are drawn to it. 
-hmm. It's not, women don't like negativity. I don't blame them. And this is one of those things. Well, you're, in fact, you're talking about it. There's nothing, there's no dark shadow, you know, dark cloud hanging over this. It's something that's, that's intriguing more than anything else. Except for the, uh, the whole uh, paradigm of lies from NASA, keeping the, the rest of the world in, well, the shadow of their lie. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Sure. But, but remember, NASA didn't build it. NASA, all NASA is doing is trying to keep the secret. And to, to be as, as honest as I can here, how I qualify, I'm a little different than other conspiracy people, meaning I qualify conspiracies based on what I would do in their place. So part of when I was doing the proprietary software thing for years, and oh, sorry, that's one more thing. Uh, because I spent so many years in proprietary software, mm -hmm. I phone support, not chat, not, not the new school chat stuff you guys do. We actually were on the freaking phone. We, I talked to a lot of panicked people that were using high-end software that was very expensive and fairly complex mm -hmm. that, uh, that was tied to payroll. And these people were very upset. So I had to learn stress management when talking to them. Mm -hmm. And it, du during that, I learned a lot of empathy. So I, so translate that to the conspiracy world. I look at the other side and I say, okay, it's not that it's just a conspiracy. Why are you doing it? If you're, if you're looking at it, it's like, why is NASA doing it? Why, you know, pick your group. Why is the Illuminati, the Bilderbergs, the Trilaterals, the Council of Foreign Relations, the Masons, the Vatican, blah, blah, blah. Why are they all doing this? Why are they doing their certain things? And, and I look and I go, and if I can, if I can look, put myself in their shoes and say, Oh yeah, I get it. It's a power move or it's this move or it's a control move. Then I'll be going, Oh, if, if, if I can't improve on the idea, cause I'm a fairly clever problem solver, then I'll be like, Oh yeah, I can see why they're doing it. I don't, I don't necessarily agree with it because it's like, well, people, people, this world is run on greed and money and power. But if I can under, and the, what I like to call the greater good, mm -hmm. if it's for the greater good, uh, it's sometimes it's tough to argue with that. You know, the needs of the many do outweigh the needs of the few. And and for anyone that says, oh, you know, you can't put a, co a price on human life. I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, you can. We do it in business and, and the military all the time. Well, we shouldn't, but some decided we, no, that we should. <laughs> we, we shouldn't, but it, but it does happen. I mean, the, yeah. the age old question, you've seen psychology studies along these lines, which is okay, Gillette, you know, if this person doesn't die, you're going to lose a whole bunch of more people. Mm -hmm. uh, or the old argument, would, you know, uh, it's the impossible choice. Uh, would you, you know, would you sacrifice a single person to cure cancer? I know it's exaggerated. And then you say, would you, would you sacrifice your best friend? Mm -hmm. And we see it in the movies all the time. And I'm the guy in the movies just yelling. It's like, let him die. <laughs> let him die. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm not being horrible when I say that, but it's <laughs> like the movies would be a lot shorter in my version. <laughs> like, For no, sure. no, get him out of there. Let him get run over. Let him, whatever it is. It's, it's like, what? And it's like, should I, shouldn't I? Oh, the, the tears and the, the wrestling with the conflicts. Uh, no, it's an easy choice for me. And so, um, what what do you think is NASA's power move by hiding that the earth is flat? Oh, NASA's not a power move at all. NASA's, NASA's a necessity. Okay. Um, you have to militarize space to keep this thing a secret. The last thing you want is giant tech companies, eh, sorry, military tech companies to get involved. Uh, people don't usually understand that NASA is just a collection of parts, meaning uh, that they, they, all the stuff that they build is based off of, of technology from big companies like Boeing, McDonnell Duckelix, uh, Lockheed Martin, uh, General Dynamics, military contractors. We have huge military contractors here in this country. Mm -hmm. The last thing you want is to have those, those people, those groups not controlled. So you create a military group called NASA, and they absolutely are military. They're Department of Defense built on the still burning embers of the Nazi war machine. I mean, we took their engineers. Russia took their engineers. We both bought, built programs based on missile technology. Mm -hmm. And in the process, you, when you militarize space, you have to, again, keep the private companies out of it. Imagine, for example, if years later, Boeing and Frito-Lay got together. 
because Frito Lay wanted to put some sort of banner on the moon or in space. Yeah. No, no, no. You can't. You can't let that happen. <laughs> you got to control it for as long as. And, and then you might say, well, there's private companies. There's Blue Horizons and there's Virgin Galactic and there's SpaceX. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Where do you think they get all their engineers from? It's like these guys were comp compromised since day one. And in fact, the the fact that SpaceX just won a contract to send Americans back to the moon. Mm -hmm. It's like. There's no difference between SpaceX and the American military. Yeah. And they, they are actually hand in hand, which is so weird mm -hmm. to, to watch because no one questions it. It's like, why the NASA budget, they're in direct competition, but apparently SpaceX now, a private company now is going to do the, the American space mission. Uh, doesn't matter. So no, there it's just, and the money they make is nice on the side. Uh, they get paid, what's this year's budget? $54 million a day. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of yep. money to, to, to spend on something that you're not doing anything. So you use some of it, create some rinky dink special effects. Uh, you know, you can build, you pay some people. I mean, they employ thousands of people. Sure. But the rest of the money you can use for anything you want. So now NASA's NASA is more of, it's not control. They are the window dressing mm -hmm. for this. They are the, the facade. And so if you think that space is militarized, that means that you don't believe that the moon landing was fake? You mean I do believe the moon landing was fake? No, because if you think that space does exist and that it's militarized- Oh, no, 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 I'm saying, no, sorry. Let me, let me clarify that. Space, from the outside, space is militarized. From our standpoint, there is no space anyway. Mm -hmm. So from the, from the general public, space is militarized. Okay. But for us, it's, it goes even worse than that. It's like they're faking space being militarized because there's nothing real about it at all. Okay. They're just sinking money into a program to reinforce space. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So every story you've ever seen on the news about, you know, it's like, oh, there's something happening on Jupiter. Oh, look at the Saturn. Look at Mars. Look at, mm -hmm. we've reclassified Pluto. And every month or two now, it's like, oh, this asteroid's going to go near Earth. Mm -hmm. It's going to be this big. And, but it's probably not going to hit us. Or the worst stories are, oh, this asteroid may hit Earth in 100,000 years. Why would you even release that story? Because <laughs> it gets people, because it's reinforcing space. All okay. those stories they tell you is one subtext, which okay. is Jupiter, you're on a globe. Saturn, you're on a globe. Everything is to reinforce the globe. That's all it is. So no, it is, it, the NASA is a complete fabricated program. Well, think about when it was formed, for example. It was formed in 1958, right after the, um, uh, the, the first high altitude nuclear projects were, were done. So people don't know that for a span of about four years, the United States and the Soviet Union were firing atomic weapons up. That's all they did was fire them up. Mm -hmm. Why? Why are you firing so many freaking rockets up? And then, but after the first couple shots, you know, a couple megatons, and you can look that, look at this in the yield, you know, the, the, the size of these things. Mm -hmm. After the first megaton shots, I, cause I knew exactly all right, you're back. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what, ha what happened. You still, can you still hear me? I can, yeah, now. <laughs> All right, now you're better. Yeah, you too. All right, I am killing, I am killing everything on my machine just <laughs> to make sure we have total bandwidth. Okay, anyway, so the... The you short version to the, next question, to the next to the next question. Yeah, sure. Um. So, uh, yes. Uh, my my next question was: Most people would describe you as a conspiracy theorist. Are you bothered by that term? Yeah. No. No. Not at all. No. Uh, conspiracies are and have been. Uh, um, no conspiracies have been a part of my life and I don't, I don't think it's a bad thing because I can, I can define conspiracies the way they should be, which is people forget that in the media, there's no such thing as a conspiracy, right? There is in the media. They only talk about it as either, uh, a scandal mm -hmm. or a tragedy. Right, which are really just because look the legal definition of conspiracies, and it's used in our. I don't know what they do over in your your country, in France, but in 
ours, it's part of our court system every hour. If the what? In France. <laughs> My yeah, in France. France. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. In France. I shouldn't say your country. In France. I know you guys are very proud. <laughs> so in uh, in over here in the States, for example, if if two or more people, uh, sorry, three or more people commit a crime, it's considered a conspiracy to commit the crime. So mm -hmm. if you decided, for example, to rob a bank and a few of your friends decided to rob a bank, you would get charged twice. You would get charged with armed robbery and conspiracy to commit armed robbery. Mm -hmm. So yes, conspiracy has a negative connotation tied to it, but the mainstream media avoids the term at all costs, which is why they, they don't like loose ends, which is why the, the running joke in the conspiracy world, by the way, would be considered uh, the lone gunman theory, mm -hmm. right? Whenever there's some shooting or blah, blah, it's always a lone gunman, always. <laughs> It's never because if it's more than that, then it becomes a conspiracy and they can't talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. So it's either it's usually now, especially in the States, it's a lone gunman who then was killed, you know, who died during the process. And yeah. The JFK thing, which I love so much, it is a lone gunman who was caught and then killed by another lone gunman. <laughs> the odds of which are, are again, like having a, a unicorn struck by lightning. <laughs> it's so unbelievable and yet that's what they sold the public so no i do not mind uh, the, the conspiracy being a conspiracy person for me is just someone who's willing to ask questions uncomfortable questions that's it you know and who who looks at the news who looks at the mainstream media and says and looks at and says it's okay to question what they're saying I know there is a massive contingency of people in this world that believe the news is absolutely true. And I understand why. Look, conformity builds empires. That's how you build them. You have to have most of the population you know, in, in on your narrative. Mm -hmm. But the, the general public doesn't remember that, it, that news of corporations, I can't, again, not going to compare what happens in France. Over here, though, those corporations are owned by bigger corporations, which are owned by giant parent companies, and they are never objective, ever, mm -hmm. ever, ever, ever. So anyone ever says, oh, there's no such thing as fake news, what are you talking about? And like we, especially in, in this country, the, the line I used to, and I don't know how many news organizations you follow, I, I challenge people. I say, everything on CNN is absolutely true, and everything on Fox News is absolutely true can't be these two networks hate each other mm -hmm. they, they talk about each other all the time they accuse each other of lying all the time so don't ever tell me there's no such thing as fake news somebody's lying mm -hmm. but nobody nobody wants to to admit it uh sorry last thing on this which would be the conspiracy everyone i think deep down has a little conspiracy theorist in them mm -hmm. everyone's got this imaginary line on this side of the line is what you're willing you're you're comfortable with questioning Mm -hmm. outside of that is scary you don't want to question it for mm -hmm. the conspiracy world that line gets further and further out to where when you're doing the the flat earth thing with with our side nothing's mm -hmm. off the table we question everything which is why i put in there i go you know do your own research and mm -hmm. ask questions because it doesn't hurt the there's an old old saying which is things are never what they first appear to be mm -hmm. And we, we set these weird expectations, you know, well, you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Sure. People walk into situations like, oh, no, it's got to be this way. It's like, no, 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 it's not. Uh, Thomas Jefferson, you know, our second president, he owned slaves, <laughs> right? People don't like, don't like look at uh, John Wayne smoked a lot of marijuana. <laughs> Nobody talks about that. Uh, <laughs> uh, Knight Rider. The television show about the talking car, right? That was supposed to be a Saturday morning car kids show. And it tested so well at night that they said, let's make it for everybody. So there you go. None <laughs> okay. of those are conspiracies, but you know, I thought I'd bring it up. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, uh, in my next question, uh, so in the documentary, uh, and you talked about that a little, uh, you said that right before delving into Flat Earth, you eventually got bored with the other conspiracy theories. Uh, could you elaborate on the fact that you were yeah. bored with them? Uh, if you, like anything, uh, uh, even your favorite movies, I know you're young, but 
when you can only watch them so many times or, or the example it's like okay i'm whatever one of your top 10 songs and you've got your top 10 songs probably of course you listen to them every single day no why because it gets stale after a while you know I unless i disagree but that's maybe just me i have absolutely no limits regarding how many times i can watch a movie or listen to a song but that's maybe just again me. it's early <laughs> <laughs> trust me when i say this I have I have movies going back to you know your age that I loved and loved and loved, but I only watch them sparingly now mm -hmm. because I because you once you've memorized them, and I know maybe there's some you know that are that I'm anyway. So imagine this with conspiracies though, where I, I once I got once I developed an opinion on all of them, it's like all right, UFOs I like, uh, Bigfoot yeah sure, Elvis being alive not so much, I. You, once you start developing those and you go over them again and again and again and again, it's like, oh, is there anything? Well, kind of like how people are, are um, I've been watching a lot of Netflix recently because of the lockdowns, mm -hmm. right? They're running out of things to watch because there's only so much content that can be put out there. Yeah. Uh, that was the same thing with me, where the, the Flat Earth, for me, there was nothing else to look at. But yes, I, I had an opinion on all of them and only looked at Flat Earth because I was sitting, you know, I remember home, it was a, it was a nice summer day <laughs> and, and I was like, yeah. And plus I wasn't getting any, any younger. That was the other thing, by the way, what you, people, when you get older, you, talk, uh, you start talking about bucket lists, right? Mm -hmm. Things you want to, you, you, yeah, you don't yeah, wanna, I know the concept. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't want any regrets. And yeah. it's like, you know what? I'm going to look at it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Why the hell not? And uh, yeah, that's how it came about. Okay. Okay, so what's your what's the movie you, that you have in mind that you like watch sparingly now? Just to be curious, a movie that I loved. My oh, there's so many. I'm a huge movie fan. I've watched a lot of movies, but there's some. Being a guy, there's some action films that I have enjoyed more than others over the years. Mm -hmm. um, one that I watched, one of the few movies that I watched in the theater that I went back the very next day and watched it again in the theater. Some people are like, oh, it's Star Wars. Like, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't Star Wars. Star Wars it had its moments, but uh, <laughs> no, it was uh, Predator, the original Arnold oh. Schwarzenegger movie from 1986 or seven, I believe. Yeah. And, and it was, it was aged, it's aged very well. And I, I thought it was very tightly written mm -hmm. and, uh, I, I really enjoyed it. And I watched it a lot in my twenties. And then as I got older, I was like, yeah, I didn't want to, I didn't want to wear it out. Yeah. yeah I, I wanted to be able to enjoy it. So I would watch it every uh, five, six months type thing to where now, you know, even if it's just once a year, it's like, oh yeah, I sit and watch it. Uh, <laughs> but, but I have, I have, there's so many, I, I could not pick. Uh, I mean, that's just one example of one movie, you know, one genre, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, it's, I, I have a big, I try to think of, of other movies that, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I go, I like the classics too, though. Yeah. You know, the, the Wizard of Oz, wonderful movie. Mm -hmm. Uh, the, um, uh, I've got, is, uh, or, or, um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Sure. I actually have a golden ticket that was, <laughs> I had autographed for me by Mike TV, the original Mike TV from the, from the 1970 movie, which was awesome. Oh, wow. Still framed on my wall, which I love so much. <laughs> uh, Gone with the wind, I thought was long, but I still enjoyed it. Uh, and, and again, I, 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 when I took the film, film classes in, in university, mm -hmm. I didn't appreciate, like, here's, here's a great example not to go get off track too much, which is if you took stuff in, in university about films, th they would always point to Orson Welles, mm -hmm. Citizen Kane is the greatest shot movie ever in the history. Mm -hmm. And when I was 20, I think when I first saw it, it was because it, it was required for the class. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's like, first off, it's like, oh, it's in black and white. How good it could it be? And then years later, as I'm watching it, you know, it, every five years, I appreciated it more and more to where now mm -hmm. I understand. If you know the back history of that movie, how yeah. he had, he was the only director, I think, ever that was given total control of the movie. No input at all from anyone. No producers, no nothing. They just gave him the money and let him run with it. And you watch it and, you know, he starred, wrote, directed and yes, other actors have done this over the years, but nothing to the level which he did. And it didn't do well in the box office, but it's still considered 
the greatest awesome. shot movie of all time. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for getting a little off track. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, not at all. <laughs> I pushed you to this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so, um, still not, uh, going into your flat earth, um, start. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, how did you, so you told me that you re the first time you kind of opened your eyes a little to the conspiracies, etc., etc. So you told me that that was with the, the movie JFK. So 1991. Yeah. Yeah. And so getting out of the theater, how did you um, continue to engage uh, with conspiracy theories so that you were just discovering? Well, after JFK, it was tough because, again, there was no Internet. So I had to look at I had to find different. I think I went to the library, actually, mm -hmm. to, to look up because people had written books about it. You know, the the, J, the reason why JFK, the movie was made was because it was people had questioned it for immediately afterward for years mm -hmm. to where there was a, a full blown the Warren Commission which was created in the United States to reinvestigate it, which was, of course, a joke. You know, that was all complete facade, too. And in fact, the last surviving member of the Warren Commission became president of the United States. You know, go, go figure. It's like, and, but the, it was slow going back then. Mm -hmm. I wasn't as in, all, all I knew was it was a shock to my system to where I was open to the concept then of conspiracies, mm -hmm. but I didn't really follow through with it much until, until some years later. Honestly, it wasn't until the internet started started ramping up mm -hmm. until I got into it. Now, granted, the early internet was mid nineties, yep. but that was dial up and it was it was slow. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, but through through different books, I had sorry, I was watching the road crew do something. Mm -hmm. The um, it, there were different books I had read over the years. When we're growing up in the states, we all know mostly partially. Let's say somewhat because of television shows the the old conspiracies again mm -hmm. Loch Ness Monster Bigfoot aliens we'd all heard about those and you'd all heard of you know the mysteries of the pyramids and and we all knew there were things out there but the internet coalesced it all it condensed everything and gave it a focal point mm -hmm. so but JFK opened my mind that it everything may have been more real mm -hmm. kind of like what like when you get into flat earth you revisit all the conspiracies, mm -hmm. you know, going into flat earth that, that are, that are underneath the flat earth. You, you'll revisit it. JFK for me was the first time I ever said, Hey, wait a minute. This, this actually might be a serious thing, mm -hmm. you know, to where, and, but pursuing them was difficult to be, mm -hmm. to be sure. So you hadn't heard of like the conspiracy zines? No, can remember when I, when where I was growing up, magazines, you'd have to live in a major city to get those, and even not all of them. I don't even know. I I don't remember any conspiracy magazines that were t that were in Seattle bookstores, mm -hmm. for example, back then. Now I wasn't really looking too hard, but I I browsed the shelves as much as anybody. There were some books, sure, that I read up on, but it was tough to find anything. Um, uh, public on it because you're right outside of those zines it was tough to write books and find a publisher for it amazon really wasn't a thing so it self-publishing tough to do yeah sure so, so yeah it was it was slow going for a while mm -hmm. okay great um yeah, are you aware of any conspiracy theories about you? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how how could I not? People are not shy about about telling me and there's trolls. I have dedicated trolls that that come after me all the time. You do? Uh the most popular I I did a part of the speech on that. I think it was in one of the the outtakes of the documentary. Mm -hmm. I've been accused of just about everything. Yeah. Uh, mo the most common one is that I'm a government agent that that is that is trying to steer flat earth in a completely different direction which is like okay when am I going to reveal my master plan because I've been doing it for six years <laughs> uh, that I was a studio executive for various Hollywood groups 
that I was in, that I was tied to all sorts of different people, that I was married to Patricia, that Patricia and I had kids, uh, that David and I were involved, not, not sexually, but something else, David Weiss, um, you name it, uh, that it was a, that it was a Mason, that it was part of the Illuminati. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, oh, oh, and then I was a Jewish woman. That, that was my fun one. It's like, what? <laughs> How? Why? And this was way before the transgender thing was happening. It's like, what? What? Why? Anyway, so yeah, I was aware of it, but they weren't, most of them weren't serious. And, mm-hmm. and the, the reason was because I made myself as transparent as possible, mm-hmm. meaning I'm one of the only guys out there that will actually put his name, his email address, his phone number, his physical address. Yeah. I'll tell you the high school I went to. <laughs> you know, I've, I've named people I've dated. Here's the universities I've went to. Here's, yeah. here's the companies I worked for. And I, I've laid it out as clear as possible. So if there's any sort of career track, the only thing that, that works against me is the, 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 on my post office, the, the um, here, like for example, so this po- that says Langley, Washington, right? I don't mm-hmm. know if you can see that, right? I well, Langley, your, Washington. That's... Your camera isn't on. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I haven't seen you since the beginning of this. Oh, <laughs> oh, hang on. Hopefully, well, hopefully that's not what was screwing us up here. All right, there we go. I... <laughs> sorry, you should have told me. I didn't know if you if it was a choice. I didn't want to bother. Oh, no, no, no. So, so anyway, uh, there's thing that says. Uh, uh, well, hopefully, it don't screw up the bandwidth. If it does, I'll turn turn. No, it no, off. it's okay. I can read. All right. So, so it says Langley, Washington, right? Mm-hmm. So Langley, Washington is in the Seattle corner of the country. On the other side of the corner country is Langley, Virginia, and mm-hmm. that's the head of CIA headquarters. <laughs> well. Langley VA is different from Langley WA, but people yeah. see Langley and they get this subconscious reaction. It's like, oh, he's, he must work for the government. Mm, uh, okay. Wait, has my camera never been on the entire time? No, it wasn't. <laughs> <I'm> so sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. So sorry. Anyway, so keep going. Uh, yeah, I kind of lost my track. Uh, let's get back <laughs> to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah but i i uh, tell me if it's too like if maybe she asked you not to tell anything to anyone but like i wanted to get in touch with uh patricia steer too um but like she deleted everything she's gone off the grid there's no more youtube videos there's no more social media so do you know yeah the trolls the trolls got to her So she was doing great. Mm -hmm. And then shortly after the documentary came out, she, um, uh, they, they were coming at her. They found out where she lived and they, they were just relentless to, I mean, come on. She was, she had three things going against her in the internet world. Very attractive, rich and Jewish. (laughs) Right. (laughs) And what, what, there, there was nothing that they came, they came at her. And plus she's, she didn't exactly have a, a, a thick skin. So what was happening was, uh, and I told her this right off the bat. I said, look, you, you can't read all your comments. You know, the, I, I recommend that to anyone. I was like, look, you want to have any sort of self-esteem. Don't mm-hmm. read your comments in the, in the section. Don't, don't do it. And so she was reading her, her, co- I, 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 she was, she was doing this every single video and I go, you can't read the comments from every single video. I go, what happens when you have 50 videos? What happens if you have a hundred videos? And, and she goes, I don't care. I'm going to do it all. I'm going to sanitize everything. And I go, yeah, that's not because she work. was deleting the, um, bad comments, the bad yeah. comments yeah. and blocking them. She was spending hours and hours and hours doing all this stuff. I mm-hmm. said, you're going to snap. I go, you're going to well, lose it. Well, that's going to affect your mental health. Oh yeah. I mean, people know this. There's been psychology studies that have been doing this forever, which is if you, you can read nine comments in the row, they're, they're all compliments, right? And, and there's one, be, that one, you'll remember this. Yeah. One. Yeah. It's like, you're great. You're great. You're great. You're great. You suck. And I hate you. That's all you'll care about. Yeah. People just gloss over. And I know there's some people that bask in the greatness, but everyone remembers that, that negative comment and yeah. she wouldn't, she wouldn't let it go. And so imagine that hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Yeah, of course. 
So she finally, there was this time where over here, there's something called a wellness check. Mm -hmm. And what they do is if you are worried about uh, like a senior citizen, usually next door neighbor, you, you can call the police and say, hey, I haven't seen them in a while. Can you knock on their door, see if they're mm -hmm. there? They did that to her during a podcast she was doing. And she answers the door and she tells the cops, she's like, I'm fine. It's just pissed. someone was punking me. And that was it. She shut the door, said, screw this. <laughs> and she, she tore down everything. Mm -hmm. She tore down the whole thing. I can and... totally get that. Yeah. Yeah, the internet took... can be a very toxic place. Yeah, it took her longer than most mm -hmm. to to do this, but yeah, it was it was it was tough sledding. So. And and how do you um, manage all of that? Because you probably got the same attention as her, like from the Netflix documentary. Uh, how do I how do I manage this? Um, I was gonna make up some sort of joke like heroin or or something. <laughs> Uh, no, no, it's you because I don't care. Uh, I don't read the comments. Like, the first thing I do is like, like, I may skim them a little every once in a while, but there's there's good and bad because I don't interact with a lot of people in the mm -hmm. comment section. The the first rule of anybody that's in social media is like, don't feed the trolls. Yeah, there are people dedicated to making your life a living hell out there. Mm -hmm. That's all they care about. They've had horrible childhoods. They want, I, I remember when it started back in the nineties, huh? Because once they figured out it's one of the drawbacks of the internet and that is you can be anonymous Yeah. no matter what. And I, it's usually young men and they would just, you could, you, you know how it goes, right? You're a young man. You just full of pain and angst. You're like, wait a minute. I can say anything I want mm. and there's no repercussions at all. Yeah. And it's, they would just wind up on people to where now uh, you could make a video about kittens and puppies playing in a children's cancer ward, right? And in a hundred hits, you know, a hundred likes, you're going to have somebody coming out of there that, that it's like, I've never seen a video, I think go 200 to zero. Mm -hmm. Somebody's going to come in there. It's not law of averages. It's just assholes <laughs> come in there. It's like, there's no thumbs down. Well, I'm the first one. Someone's gotta do it. <laughs> that thumbs down, unsubbed. I hate everything about this channel and you and your God and everything. And mm -hmm. and that's and then of course it starts you know, this chain reaction. People mm -hmm. love to scrap. Yeah. Ugh. So yeah. So how I get away with it? Um, one, I don't read the comments. Uh, two, if I can help it. Uh, two, I make content with the intent that more people are gonna like it than not liking it. Mm -hmm. You just play it. You're playing the averages. So I, I, I'm, I love stats. I love statistics. So I know that there's going to be likes and dislikes. And I know also the topic, which is, I understood a lot of flat earthers don't know this, that when you first get into it, you're the people that you're talking to, I don't know what your first reaction was, but I, I have said that if you don't laugh at flat earth in the first 20 minutes, you're looking at, there's probably something wrong with you mm -hmm. because everybody laughs at it right away. But when they finally get into flat earth, they get offended that somebody laughs at it. Mm -hmm. And like, no, you can't, you, you can't. People say, well, how do you stay patient? How do you, how do you not lose it? And it's like, because it'd be hypocritical. I go well, six years ago, I was that person. Mm -hmm. And everyone just forgets. It's like, they get, they get, go through this journey. And at the end of the journey, they completely forgot the journey. Mm -hmm. and, and then they go to these family gatherings. And then they say, <laughs> And I go, do not over Thanksgiving or Christmas or whatever it is, do not sit down to your family and tell them this stuff. And what do you think happens? Of course they do. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, that never goes well because, mm -hmm. because they think they can convince somebody in two hours what it took them a month to do. Mm -hmm. To months convince themselves and to, I've got it. I can totally convince my best friend and their family and my, you know, all this other stuff. I can convince them in 10 minutes. <laughs> and then they open their mouth. And it's like, yeah, flat earth. It's a thing. <laughs> People, oh, they go berserk. They, they, cause what are you going to do? The peer pressure in the room is huge. And so yeah. beat down on them. It's like, I don't know what the hell happened. Somebody threatened, you know, to put me in a mental institution. It's like, <laughs> yeah, you think? <laughs> anyway okay thank you so next mm -hmm. question let's go um so yeah what did you think of, of about the netflix documentary were you pleased with how you and the flat earth community were portrayed in it huh. well everything i predicted 
for that was spot on, meaning uh, there were two things that happened. I, I said that the Flat Earth community is going to hate it. Everyone else is going to find it really interesting. Mm -hmm. And I was right. What I did not understand was, and it took me at least six months to a year to figure this out, was people said, would you have changed anything? Not much. The reason why is it comes off as authentic, meaning, you know, here's the people that are in flat earth. Here's the people that are against flat earth. Let the chips fall where they may. Mm -hmm. uh, even the even the thing at the end with the experiment, how they ended the movie with Jaren's mm -hmm. experiment at the end. Uh, it wasn't completely, it wasn't, it wasn't edited necessarily against us. It was, it, it was partially our fault. They didn't explain a lot of the circumstances, how Jaron didn't get, even get the line of sight. He never went there during the day. He never did a dry run at all. He thought, oh, well, I'll just bring the cameras in and do the experiment for the first time live. What are you doing? But we didn't know that until months later. Mm -hmm. um, the rest of it though, and I only know this because I sat with the audiences and watched it. The mm -hmm. brilliance of that film was that the first 20, 30 minutes, the people, the, the people that I sat with, they didn't even think it was real. Meaning they thought it was a piece of um, what we call docu-fiction. Yeah. Where it's, where, it's where it's played totally straight, mm -hmm. even though it's not. And after the first 20, 30 minutes, you know, they're like, oh, this isn't real. And after the first 30 minutes, this, they got hit. It was like, wait a minute. <laughs> there's something really big and scary on the internet. I have no idea where, it, where, where this thing came from. Uh, the, the great example was, if you've heard any of my stuff, um, uh, there was a producer, a video editor actually, out in Hollywood, who was shown the final piece before it was released to the thing. And he goes, and he said, well, we want you to, to watch this. No context. We're not going to tell you anything. Just watch it. And after he was done, he comes back at him because all the f independent film people knew each other. And he goes, he goes, wow, you guys are holding out on me. He goes, where did you get the budget for this movie? <laughs> and they go, budget? It's like, what are you talking about? He goes, all those actors, they played it so straight. And, <laughs> and, 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 and they go, it's like, no, man, there were no actors. And then all of a sudden, you know, he goes, he's like, it's like what? He goes, what do you mean? That, that conference was real? <laughs> he thought the conference was completely staged. Yeah. No, it wasn't. There was nothing staged. And I will say that nothing was staged in the entire thing. Mm -hmm. And that imagine that multiplied by most of the audience. There's yeah. so many people when they watch it, by the time they get to the end, they're like, what the hell did I just see? <laughs> you know, there's there's people out there. And then they also, you know, they they run into friends. It's like, oh yeah, I'm totally into it. And so no, I I liked it only in the sense of I, I was the first person to see it uh, in a hotel room in Toronto. Uh, before that film festival, I saw it then in the in the film festival. Patricia and I saw it together in the hotel. Then we saw it at the, the film film festival, and then I got to go to different film festivals and see it. Mm -hmm. And again, it is embarrassing sometimes to watch, but at the same time, it's not about it's not about you. It's not about our community. It's about who you know the the general public that is exposed to it. And I could not think, there's other Flat Earth movies that are going to come out, you know, and it's going to be Flat Earth propaganda pieces. Remember, the whole uncut. People will switch off when, it, if it's just straight up Flat Earth, for a lot of people, they're just not going to, not going to watch it at all. Mm -hmm. We sent a whole bunch of people to one of the, the film premieres uh, in Canada and, the, you know, they hated it. You know, we had Flat Earthers because they, they want it to, you know, you want, 100 minutes isn't enough to cover Flat Earth. And so they wanted it to be more. It's like, look, it's not made by flat earthers, but that helped because the very first, sorry, let me drag this. I'm dragging this out. The very first question that was asked of the director and the producers, very first, every single time was, do you believe in flat earth? Mm -hmm. And had they answered yes, the, the, the audience and reviewers would have turned on it, but because they were adamantly against it, no, it was fine. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Uh, has, uh, so the next question, has believing that the earth is flat changed your life? And as I'm guessing that it has, how so? It has, yeah. Flat earth has changed my life in that there is no other life but flat earth. Uh, I was, that part of the documentary was true where I was, I was perfectly happy being in Boulder, 
doing doing my own thing uh and and had accomplished quite a bit by that point but once i got into flat earth the this was a ride that i couldn't get off even if i tried it mm -hmm. took over i mean i all i did was i didn't fight it i said yes to whatever it was and so i when i when i first got into it it was it was slow at first just for the first couple months and then it was interview 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 subject my phone just never stopped ringing the emails were just constantly coming in and then there was all these weird opportunities that were showing up i mean 2019 you know before the whole lockdown stuff happened was amazing i mean i did public speaking in seven different countries mm -hmm. uh i opened a conference in stockholm that had nothing to do with flat earth for for whatever reason you know that it was just me being interviewed for an hour on stage <laughs> by an american journalist because the, the the promoter was was totally with us um i did a television commercial in australia for a mobile, a mobile app and i was like hey great i completely it's like hey can you be down there in 10 days it's like okay sure and they sent tickets it's like okay um easiest money I ever made um and and people say oh you're selling out it's like no 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 if i get to say flat earth on camera i you could sit me in a chair and throw pies at me all day as long as i can say flat earth or i'm wearing some yeah. sort of flat earth thing i don't i don't care i go it's just about getting the message out um but it was it was amazing i mean it was all consuming everything i the the memorabilia and the stuff i got to do i just so many cool things um yeah changed changed me forever to where now that is this is what i do 24 7. Mm -hmm. i wake up and it's like i check the news feeds and i check the emails and like um this morning i did a promo for i did an interview for cal cal state long beach mm -hmm. long beach I think, uh, and then did a promo for a meetup in Phoenix, Arizona. Mm -hmm. Did the, the email stuff for, I'm getting prepped for the show for tomorrow, a podcast for tomorrow. Um, been dealing with a, um, a rock star from the Deftones, which was mm -hmm. a, a cool, it was like, wow, that's really, he came out <laughs> recently to, to us, which was, which was great. So we always look for celebs, you know, yeah, when they, sure. when they come, come out and it's just never i mean there's always i've got a trailer for another flat earth movie again they're going to try to sell it as a tv series which was great uh heck we were we had a we had television producers lined up to do a, a reality show and they the lockdown changed all that oh hell i'll give you a perfect example i was supposed to go to uh it was beginning of last year january 2020 i just gotten back from a, a tv interview in london come back and somebody saw it and it was mcdonald's and they said hey would you like to come out we do a thing called pancake day in in the uk and then you know it's round and flat it's like we could do a flat earth thing it's like yeah sure why not we were just about i mean we we're gonna get ready for a friend of mine we were gonna go out the all expenses thing and and do the commercial and then the lockdowns happened i was mm -hmm. like ah crap yeah of course so yeah changed my life forever i mean last six years have been just this wild ride that all i did was say yes to it uh, mm -hmm. that was the difference i didn't shy away from it which was it was like literally like an amusement park ride came car came into my living room and just sat there and i had to eventually get in it it's like okay and then once i did it's like never 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 got off this may be too personal but do you make a living out of this now no, it's not too personal. And well, 2020, let's put it that way. That could be safe. Said for oh, crap. Is there a little bit of an echo? No, I don't think so. Let me put it in my headphones. All right. How about now? I, w I was hearing you perfectly before you put the the headphones on in. Right. So. Yeah, but but every once in a while, um, I, there's some sort of weird echo because it goes through the speakers. But anyway, it doesn't matter. So uh in 2019 yeah i i was making a living absolutely i was one of the few people who could do flat earth only and make a living mm -hmm. uh 2020 brutal utter brutal so but before that i mean people don't get into it though for the money they they don't why would you it's a horrible idea i mean even even the producers of the film for example they were the first to say I and mean, they had no faith that it was going to get uh, uh even in the film festivals 
Mm -hmm. And even little faith, even less faith, and oh, it'll take two years to, before if anyone picks it up at all. And it was picked up immediately. You know, mm -hmm. it was by by Amazon and iTunes, and and then Netflix picked it up at the end of 2018, and I believe it was yeah 2018. We shot it in 2017, right? Yeah, 2017. Yeah, and once Netflix picked it up, well, then it went atomic. So those guys made out pretty good, which was great. But nobody in the film, for example, got paid because it's a documentary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, have you lost contacts with friends or family since you started being uh, so outspoken about believing that the earth is flat? No, but I'm a little different. <laughs> Meaning I was, um, I was pretty eccentric growing up you know, played video games for a living, ran my own fireworks company, got in trouble all the time for stuff. So for, for most people, it was like, okay, what's he done now? <laughs> it's like, so it wasn't out of the blue, nothing. It, it surprised people, but not too badly with me. Uh, other people I know have alienated others, you know, they've gotten divorced and, and there've been family issues with me. No, as a matter of fact, I ran into family members that were into the concept, but they were in the closet. That's how I knew really about the whole closet world out there mm -hmm. because they were afraid of friends and family, but mostly coworkers. You don't want to go to work and all of a sudden become that person that is like, Oh yeah, they're into flat earth because then they just pick on you about it all the time. It's like, Hey man, you into Bigfoot too. <laughs> <laughs> they were, they're relentless. So, but, but no, not for, for me. No, not so much. So do you think not there are many people like how, how many people would you like on like a percentage of um, of people who have been alienated by coming out as a flat earther? Do you think that's a big portion of the uh, community? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The every every person I know that's been in the flat earth, I shouldn't say everyone, but a, a large percentage of the people that that are public about it. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, they catch grief, which is why we have so many, 90% of our membership is in the closet. Why, why wouldn't they be? I mean, and yes, you can equate it to the same, you know, same thing as the homosexual community, which is all you have to do is see somebody else, you know, have a hard time coming out. And, and then you, you won't, won't have, you won't want to. No, you, you definitely won't. And so a lot of flat earth, it's worse for flat earth. I mean, come on, saying you're gay, that's easy by comparison. It's like, well, oh, depends yeah. on where you are. <laughs> well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're absolutely right. It does depend where you are, but we, but yeah, there are there are a large number of people that have have problems, especially in the partner issue, because if your partner is not on the same page as you, that's a big, big rift. That's a big gap, and you might as well be from different religions at that point. Uh, and why wouldn't you? I mean, flat earth has been used a lot of religious terms and we're, there's a lot of people that, that are on the religious side in flat earth. So it'd be very similar. It'd be like somebody from Islam, all this, you know, it's like, oh yeah, by the way, uh, you know, I'm, I'm converting to Judaism. It's like, what? <laughs> that's not, that's not going to hold out very long. You can only go so far and then it should probably just crumble. Okay. So. Okay, next question. Um, yeah, so this is touching to the core of my uh, interest. So for my project, uh, to what extent do you think the term community is relevant regarding Flat Earth? And how do you correlate this term to Flat Earth society, for example, which is a different term, but not exactly the same meaning? And to which of those two terms do you relate the most? Give me the first, give me the two terms again. So community and society, because you talk of the flat earth community, but the, right, right, right. the name is flat earth society. Well, yeah, the old flat earth society, if, if flat earth was a piece of software, we would be flat earth 2.0. Uh, flat earth 1.0, that's the old group going all the way back to the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. And they haven't done much for a long time which is why we distanced ourselves fairly quickly. Flat Earth, the Flat Earth community, which is what we prefer, uh, we are almost entirely based on social media. 
Mm-hmm. Whereas the old groups were just old school. I mean, it was interesting because the Flatter Society contacted me like two years in once we started doing this. And they started saying, oh, yeah, we support what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. It's like, where have you been? It's <laughs> been two years. What took you so long? And sorry, we don't need your help. We, we've outgrown whatever you guys were thinking. You guys were just stagnant. You weren't doing anything. And I wasn't trying to be insulting to them. I was like, look, you just didn't, you know, I don't know what you've been doing for the last 50 years <laughs> or longer, but it, it hasn't been working for you. So it's been, it's been a really, really small group. Plus the, the thing I mentioned in the clues was I noticed like one of the only flat earth society groups allowed trolls to just run the forums that run the, the message boards. The trolls mm-hmm. were running everything. They, they were literally the version of the velvet rope bouncers, mm-hmm. which was, there's like, yeah, nothing to see here. Go away. Nothing to see here. They're not serious. Get out of here. Nothing to see here. And, and people would just, they just bat people away. And so the membership never, ever grew. It's like, why are you letting the trolls run it to mm-hmm. where most of our people now think that they're, uh, they're just controlled opposition mm-hmm. that there's people and why not? So what I would do. And so um, could you elaborate on the fact that you feel as though the people, the flat earthers are constitute a, com- a community? Say that one more time. Oh, uh, why they're considered, sorry, yeah. why they're, con- why they're considered a community? No, why do you consider yourself part of a community? Like how do, could you oh, yeah, 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 yeah. examples of that? Like just elaborate on the idea. <laughs> Well, the community, it's, we're constantly in contact with each other for one, you know, we're between all the different social media aspects, we're all integrated. Mm -hmm. So we're, we all know what's going on. The, 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 the chain of information gets spread back and forth very, very quickly, multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. And then every once in a while we get to meet in person, Mm -hmm. which is even better. So great. I mean, the conference, that first conference down in Raleigh, which you saw in the movie was Mm -hmm fantastic that was a very galvanizing moment for us where everyone finally got together people that never had met i hadn't met most of these people with the exception of uh, patricia and a couple others and there we were finally getting to to you know to see you know to sit down and 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 for a lot of us it made it real it made it 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 was the final push in that beforehand it was all just voice and video but now we could actually, you know, spend time, have drinks together and, mm-hmm. and talk about strategy. And yeah, it made the community what it is today. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, have you um, kept contact with, like, have you developed friendships or um, oh, yeah. relationships? My, my, that have gone- my only friends, really, outside of immediate family are, are flat earthers. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. In fact, in fact, why would I even have... It's sort of like the spouse thing. Why would I even have friends that weren't flat earthers? You know, mm-hmm. I kept contact. I keep contact with some people that aren't. Sure, a few, but most of them are on board because so, they sh- they share the same interests. So you seem to say that you have been in maybe in a in a lesser manner uh, alienated by this because if you kept contact contact with only a few people who don't believe in uh, the flat earth then means that maybe you've given up on other relationships? Uh, some, yes. But that's just, not how, there's only so many hours in the day. Mm-hmm. So I let, let's change the wording. I prioritize my contacts based on if they're flat earthers or not. Okay. Uh, and so I will give, if they're a flat earther and they need something, I will, you know, and I've done this many times, you know, if I'm looking at my list, it's like, oh yeah. Yeah, they get the first, they get the first calls. They, they mm-hmm. are the people I'm going to reach out to first. And yes, yeah, some other people have dropped off. Sure. Why, why not? I, you know, they're not part of the cause, for lack of a better term. Okay. I, th- I, I think my next question is pretty much... Uh, yeah, do you often engage uh, with or meet up with uh, other flat earthers? So that's just a following, like follow-up question. Being where I am, not as much. I'm kind of jealous of uh, the flat earthers that have. I mean, there's pockets of flat earthers that live fairly close to each other in different mm-hmm. parts of the, parts of the country. But I'm up on an island, you know, near British Columbia. So there's some here, and yeah, I do get to meet with with a few. In fact, I did a meetup uh, about a month ago on the west side of Washington, which was great. 
got to meet with people and there's going to be some more meetups as the weather turns nicer here we we tend to do more meetups uh but as far as people on the island very few but the fact that there's people on the island great fantastic but yeah i do meet them meet up with them from time to time sure and so don't have sorry go ahead sorry i was gonna say but you don't but you don't have to because of social media you know most of the time it's like you know phone call or an email or something as long as as long as everyone's touching base it's usually okay and so the um, the pockets of uh, flat earthers that you were mentioning, you know, so you told me that you were jealous of them. That's because yeah. they get to meet up like more often than you do being. On yeah, they're they're always within, you know, really, they're really close. You, you understand. I live in a place where you can't you have to take a boat to leave <laughs> type type deal. So but other people, they're they're close. So if they want to get together for a weekend thing, it's, it's mm -hmm. fairly, fairly casual and it's nice. Yeah. That's great. I'm happy for him. That's that's great. That's but at the same time, we the the meetups, which is why the meetups are so important, you know, and, we, and which is why it was difficult for us out of desperation. You know, we did one last year because everyone was going crazy. Mm -hmm. We it was tough to even organize one. And um, can you tell me about the the conventions? Like, just uh, talk me through them. Like, what happens? Is it like just Really well, the, like the uh, the first, yeah, the first three that we did, Raleigh, Denver, and Dallas, uh, 2018, 19, and 20, respectively. No, sorry, 17, 18, 19. Mm -hmm. the, they're loosely organized. Those first three were done by a single guy and a couple assistants. He was out of Canada uh, named Robbie Davidson, tall guy that was in the, that was in the movie. And he just went through and found the most popular people on social media and, you know, based on sub count or just the word of mouth. It's like, oh yeah, this person would be great. Or if they had decent public speaking skills or they good experiments, anyone that would show interest on stage, mm -hmm. you know, they put them in front of it. It's like, okay, what do you got? And, and they could keep an, they keep an interest. That's how they were picked. And of course his personal because it was, he was the guy that was organizing most of the stuff financially and logistically, he got the final say on who was in and who was out. And that would seem to work out. The, the first conference, and of course, n nobody's going to be perfectly happy because half the community is very religious and half the community is not. So after the first conference, which you didn't, you, know, you saw in the movie, but afterwards there was all sorts of conflict because half the people wanted it to be more religious and half the people want to be less religious yes, yes which is fine the compromise uh so to where we when we finally got to dallas there were two different stages where there was like a secular stage and more of a, a religious stage you know because that way people could could go to either one and you could separate them the best you can um but that was that's basically it and then we would fly out to the conference you know, we like me and I, I get the invitation i go i usually show up a day or two early it's really a giant party though because people wouldn't sleep they people were so excited people don't understand during the the like the raleigh conference nobody slept even when they got to their hotel rooms you know i was in my hotel room for at least six to seven hours a night and I could not sleep because the energy of the building was just, you know, people were just so excited to be there. And so you would, you would listen to as many presentations as you could. Most people just hung out in the lobby. It was tough. You know, you know, like they would flash the lights in the lobby to get the people to come in. Yeah, that never worked. <laughs> people were just in the lobby constantly talking, talking, talking. And then after the conference was, you know, the daily conference, because it ran a couple of days, you'd, they'd stay up all night at the bars and, and it was just this big social release. Mm -hmm. People were just, just this constant interaction nonstop. And then, you know, some people would sleep and everyone would miss the morning sessions. <laughs> uh, and then it would start over again and it was great. And then even after it was over, people would stay in town for a day or two. It was fantastic. Yeah, that that's amazing. <laughs> oh, it was. It was really, really it was really, and no one, we didn't even expect it. I remember the uh, the news teams over here, they will send a scout, like a single person, no cameras, and they will show up to the event 
and kind of look around and see if it's worth sending a full blown team. Mm -hmm. And after that first day, everybody sent teams. They're just like, Oh, you got to get down here and see this. <laughs> and so all the, the, by the second day, it was just nonstop cameras everywhere, which was mm -hmm. just wild. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was a, it was a real high point. It was so do you think when the uh, the world will get back to a little more normal state of affair, the that you will um, and organize more conventions? Well, yes and no. I, and I talked about this in, in several things recently. The you know, normally I'd say, oh yeah, and the cliche answer would be, of course we would. We're going to get right back into it. And the problem is that conspiracy people don't like the whole idea of masks and vaccines mm -hmm. and all this other stuff. Well, that's a problem because corporate liability, at least over here, says that you can't do events without, that we, we're already seeing this. In fact, I did a video, my first video that was ever banned on YouTube, uh, which was called uh, The Coming Gattaca, based on the movie from the 90s, which says, look, if the, the way the vaccines are being rolled out, it's, we're going to turn into a two-class system. And you're saying, well, that may not be so bad. Well, it isn't unless you're on the other side, meaning it's either a first class or a second class system. And all the conspiracy people will immediately become second class. So that's going to be tricky because like, for example, what's the difference? We could not do uh, any, our the conference we were supposed to do in Vegas, we couldn't do because no, no convention center would allow us to go in without masks. That's going to be the same thing with the vaccines. We're already seeing it here with sporting events and all sorts of stuff. So I don't know. It's going to be weird. The conspiracy world's in, in a bit of a predicament in that regard where the, because if, if you stand, if you don't stand your ground and you take the shot, well, then your credibility has gone. And it's like, why are you a conspiracy person in the first place? But if you don't take the shot, then you're now a second class citizen and you don't get to do all the fun things and your community may be hurt, suffer because of that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's not fun either. So it's, it's not a, there's no, it's a lose, lose mm -hmm. type, type of deal. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not sure it's it, the next nine to 12 months is going to be a very precarious time for for the community at large mm -hmm. i i don't i don't have an easy answer for you okay and um i wanted could you elaborate also on the fact that um like there are ma uh, many like people who bring in different um knowledge types of knowledge and uh skills to the community like sure. so in the documentary we saw the 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 person who made the uh the clocks i think the models uh, yeah the, yeah the models of the flat earth etc how yeah. do you, how do they how does it all mix up and add up in to build the community well with if you have enough numbers in any sort of community your demographics are going to skew in different ways so you are going to have guys perfect example would be chris pontius he made models and different like we've had engineers uh we've had pilots that'll oh there's oh there's so many different categories there if because we call it all a flat earth university really i mean there's so many different things you could go into flat earth it's the the reason why it's got a, such a broad appeal is you can do just about anything you want so if there are some people that are very detail oriented that will go after every nasa project and that's all they do they focus on nasa it's like oh, here i'm going to break down everything that nasa's ever done wrong consistently wise i'll treat it like a like a fictional movie um you've got the the nuts and bolts guys the guys that everyone that, that make the, the flat earth models that uh, to the guy, people that help build stuff for the stages to the, the people that do, oh geez, there's a, the, the experiment people, the people that do nothing but laser experiments, the people that do high altitude experiments, the people do physical gravity simulation experiments and so on and so on. Um, you've got the public speakers. Mm -hmm. uh, the people that, that just go up on stage and they give presentations. You've got the people that try to be more like a teacher. You know, they'll, they'll do podcasts and they get people to do a lot of Q and A's. Uh, uh, there's uh, people do music. I mean, I've got a playlist on my, I mean, what conspiracy has music, <laughs> you know, that's tied to the conspiracy. Nobody does a happy banjo song about JFK. It doesn't exist. <laughs> 
but Would you we have songs to me. Could you recommend? Names? Oh, I'll, I'll I'll send you. Oh, I'll send you the whole Flat Earth playlist. That oh, I've I got would on my love channel. that. I would it's, love it's that. It's amazing. <laughs> the there's a we have a guy that made um, his whole album they're called the Flat Earth uh, or Conspiracy Music Guru, and I'll send you his 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 stuff. But it's just amazing the amount of different. I mean everything from folk to rock to rap to. Uh, I'm trying to think of different categories. Country, pop, pop metal, uh, you name it. There's there's all sorts of songs which are which are dedicated to the flat earth community. And that's because it gets people so charged up that they get into it. So like again, find me another conspiracy that has a, such a broad music section. And that's all these people do is do music. You combine all those aspects and you have a really interesting convention. So like when the Raleigh convention happened. All this stuff was on display. You had wonderful public speakers going up there. You had people that were doing informative clinics. You had people in the lobby selling all the stuff they made. Although Chris Bonnie's stuff was definitely the most interesting because it was, was well, he's still doing it. I got a model from him uh, just recently. I'm staring at it. Um, the, but again, it goes along with the demographics. If you can make a, a group of people large enough in the community, you will get people in just about every field and they will dedicate their field accordingly. It's like, okay. And I have people emailing me quite often saying, hey, what can I add? What can I do? It's like, here's, here's my specialty. I specialize in cell towers and I can show you that, that uh, satellites aren't what they say they are. I, I'm a pilot. And I fly international flights. I'm a person that works in shipping. I'm a person that works in this. You know, what can I, what can I do? And mm -hmm. so I've got, I've got a playlist which is basically subject matter testimonies. You know, uh, experts for the people that come on and, and mm -hmm. want to talk about this stuff. Uh, I've got a playlist just for experiments. All sorts of people: people who do long distance photography, people who do mirror experiments, people who do level experiments, and the laser people. Uh, just. Tons and tons of different. Now, of course, I have to be careful though, because there are certain disciplines which aren't allowed into our community. Like one, the people don't know that the person that was supposed to co-sponsor the conference in Raleigh, they didn't talk about this in the the documentary. He was an he was a structural engineer. He still is. He, you know, and he's sponsoring, you know, he's going to sponsor this, this. He was supposed to do this with Robbie. Well, people don't know that when you have to get a certificate for a profession, you are then responsible for that profession's standards. And if somebody wants to, you imagine this, right? So you have a troll that finds out a structural engineer is going to host a flat earth conference. He calls up the Association of Structural Engineers. And they call him and they say, yeah, it would look bad if you believed in flat earth and you were a structural engineer. You need to get away from this or we're going to pull your license. And that's like he pulled away from it. Mm -hmm. and, and But that sort of thing. There's, so there's certain people that can't publicly come out and yeah, say, it. I mean, sure. all, the, all the pilots we've dealt with, uh, especially the one from KLM, uh, the female pilot, she was benched immediately. Because the corporate doctor said, yeah, we can't have you in a plane flying saying that you believe in flat earth because people might lose faith in the airline. Mm -hmm. Although it's becoming a lot more commonplace than it was. Um, sports stars, they get away with it to a certain extent. But sports stars are interviewed on a much more regular basis. They just get tired of it. Shaquille O'Neal, great example. Big basketball player over here. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a believer. He, he was publicly for us for 10 days. And then one of his sponsors <laughs> called him and said, yeah, you really ought to get away from that. And he, he goes on a talk show and says, yep, totally joking, totally <laughs> joking. Yep. And, and that worked. And so now he doesn't have to deal with it. So does that all that help? Yeah, sure. Um, I wanted to ask, so I'm thinking about this as I'm hearing you speak. So you seem to be, so you believe in uh, that the, the earth is flat, but you yeah. also seem to uh, embrace kind of all of the other uh, conspiracy theories. Do you think that it's the case for most people who tend to believe in one conspiracy theory and then like just embrace, um, embrace the rest of them? Yeah, well, it, it, flat Earth is unusual in that regard, meaning 
once you get into flat earth, if you believe in it, if you can get flat earth is the toughest one to believe in. Once you believe in it, you then become open-minded to every other conspiracy under it because everything else is a lower tier. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you become kind of a hyper conspiracy person, meaning, and I'd be the first one to say this beforehand, if you would have said, come to me before flat earth and said that, that you're pretty sure you knew a person that knew that Elvis had Bigfoot's baby. I would laugh you out of the room and like, get the hell out of here, right? Now, now that I'm into flat earth, what, what ground do I have to stand on to condemn you? I'd be like, you know what? I start my day with flat earth. <laughs> I'll give you a couple minutes. What do you got? <laughs> and it's, but it's true. And, and, but imagine that that's the funny side, right? But imagine the other side of it where people is like, they believe in flat earth. Now everything's real. Everything is real. 9 11 is real. Pearl Harbor is real. Uh, every, you know, the Apollo, if you can think of a conspiracy, in fact, there's a new term uh, recently, which I'm not fond of, but I know it's very real. It's called auto hoaxing, which is you've heard the court case, you know, uh, innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. right? No, no, not in the conspiracy world. In the conspiracy world, if you're an auto hoaxer, it's absolutely fake until it's not fake. Meaning if you're, it's on the news, it's on mainstream media, they're like, yeah, fake, hoax, 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 fake. fake. Even if it, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, they're just going to claim it's a hoax. That's the default state is hoax. Then, you know, prove it it's not, which mm -hmm. is weird. Uh, but, but flat earth is a cause of this. Flat earth is because, because again, if, if you can keep flat earth, if you can make the flat, the flat earth, the deception of flat earth, if that's real, then everything else is possible. And it's weird. It's exciting, but at the same time, it's kind of scary because then all of a sudden you backtrack, you look over every other conspiracy you've ever thought about, and you're like, well, hell, if they could pull that off, why wouldn't they pull that off? What, why, why would you think otherwise? Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's a, it's a weird, weird thing. And do you think that, so that's how you think that the fact that believing is in flat earth it ju is just so paradigm shifting that you're going to have to at least give a thought to the other conspiracy theories. Do you think that other people in your community uh, have the same train of thoughts? Like yeah. have, have the same way? Oh yeah, 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 they absolutely they do. Absolutely they do. I, I've talked to many of them. That's mm -hmm. that's generally the case because, it, which is why it's the toughest one to get around. Mm -hmm. If you can solve flat earth, everything is possible. And they know this. And But it, for them, it's like any doubt that they had, <laughs> It's a little different with me, but any doubt that they had in other conspiracies, no, there's no doubt anymore. It's absolutely a conspiracy. No matter what, no matter what it How's is. How's different about you? Um, I'm different in that I get my qualifier, the, the, the qualifier that I have, which is it's not a valid conspiracy for me unless I can't improve upon it. And I know that sounds arrogant, but that's why I look, it's like, okay, would I do that? Is, is, does it serve the greater good? You know, it's like, why are you doing it? If I don't, if I'm a big believer in good writing and plots and movies. So it's like some movies is like, I, you've seen this, like you watch for like 20 minutes. You're like, yeah, I'm not buying it. You turn off. That's with me with everything, which is if I'm looking at the conspiracy, it's like, yeah, but it doesn't make sense. If it makes sense to me from the other side, I will absolutely qualify it. Um, so, which, so, so when I got into Flat Earth, the other conspiracies really didn't change that much for me because I had already made up my opinion on them. Mm -hmm. And flat earth didn't change it that much. Mm -hmm. Not really. Uh, but for other people, it became this massive blanket that just smothered everything. And it's like, oh yeah, all, you know, they're lying to us about everything all the time. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are lots of lies out there and deceptions. Yes, our world is filled with deceptions in, in politics and business and sports and entertainment and yes, journalism and science. It doesn't mean that everything is a lie, but uh, again, prove it's not. Mm -hmm. So I, I understand where they're coming from. I totally get the auto hoaxing thing. Totally get it. Don't blame them. Uh, I'm just not a, I'm, I'm a little more discerning. My taste is a little more refined. I was <laughs> okay. I get it. Um, yeah. I think that's my last question. 
Uh, how would you characterize your position within the Flat Earth community? And do people idolize you in any way? Do they look up to you? How would you describe that? Well, I normally refer to myself as Lord, Baron, King, <laughs> uh, Demigod. <laughs> And, and the reason I do it is because it's the lifestyle, let's face it. Um, <laughs> the drugs, the sex, uh, the, 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 the red carpets. Oh, yeah, it's, it's all there. It looks like a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, 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 it's really tough to do. You know, I, I have to shoo away people on a regular basis. Like, get away, you vultures. I said no autographs. The paparazzis, yeah. Oh, the, paparazzi, yeah. the relentless. That's why I look out the window. It's like, yeah, yeah two or three of them right there. They're waiting for me to, like, take out my garbage. The, um, no, 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 no. I, I consider myself a flat earth recruiter. You know, if, if Flat Earth is a metaphorical university, and I will put, just for you, see if I can find a pic real fast for you. Copy. I think you, if I dump this in chat, you'll see it. Do, do, do. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, um, and if you need any resources, you know, stuff like that, or any videos, I'm more than happy to send them to you. Okay. Um, but if Flat Earth is a university, then I am the freshman recruiter. Uh, the 101 books, you are generally going to run into me. That's that's just how it works. Whereas there's lots of people that, that do advanced stuff. I am definitely the first year guy. Mm -hmm. So I'm the guy that'll walk you around the university. It's like, hey, we got music. We got testing. We got <laughs> NASA. We got all sorts of stuff. Uh, and then, you know, you run past me and then you never think of me again. That's not entirely true, but it, but it is. I've, I've got lots of people that say, oh yeah, I, I used to be into Mark Sargent. <laughs> you know, like, Are you like, offended by that? <laughs> no, no, not at all. I mean, because you see it in universities, right? It's like, oh yeah, I used to read whatever philosopher, but now I'm really into such and such. And by the same time, I was like, yeah, yeah, I remember him. I, I don't blame them. I, look, I don't want to be... I never wanted to be like this overarching theme. It's nice to be recognized, of course. And it's it's nice that people still will mention me and say, oh yeah, you're the guy that you know changed my life in that regard. But th just being part of the group and being part of the 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 community that we created is is more than enough for me. Everything else is is just a perk. So but yeah, but I mean having people telling you that you've changed their lives is a little more than just freshman recruiter don't you think well the university changed their life it wasn't me i was just the face that was selling the university and, and you know i was the one that was pitching it to them and in fact i was the one that was usually shying them away like you and it's like look don't look into it. It's the first the first paragraph of the book I wrote, uh, the second book anyway, which was, if you like your life the way it is, don't look at this. And it's not reverse psychology. I actually mean it. It's like, you, you once you get into it, once you reach this certain point, you cannot turn back. There's nowhere to go back to. So, the, in fact, the, the line was that people like using is from uh, one of the religious guys. His name was Rob Skiba. And he put this in, in his slideshow presentation for years, which was uh, April 15th, 2015, the day Mark Sargent ruined my life. <laughs> and they say it with, with endearment when they say yeah. it. You know, they're not being mean or anything, but it's kind of like the guy that showed you the matrix. It was, it's like it's like it's it's not that I ruined their life or changed their life. The Matrix changed their life. I just kind of helped you along. You were probably going to get there one way or the other. I'm trying to be humble here. Uh, <laughs> yes, it's it's. You nice. don't have to if you if you have that much of an that big of an impact on people's lives. It you should. I I want to know. <laughs> I'm not going to think no, that you're I, arrogant or anything. I just, no, 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 no. I, just, I, like, I, I, am, I embrace it, but the community has become something way bigger than I ever imagined. Way, way bigger. Uh, yeah, yes, I made the clues, but if you watch the clues closely, I never used math. I never used any. I just connected a few dots and said, you know what? This may be something you want to look at, and here's why. Click, 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 click. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Uh, but people just ran with it. And that not that the, what is it? Great, great things have small beginnings. Uh, and that was, and in fact, there were flat earthers before me. The difference was I got lucky. The most, in most cases, you can look at this throughout history. In most cases, it comes down to being the right place at the right time. 
there's so many instances like, you know, great content, totally wrong time or the, vice versa. You know, right time, no content. <laughs> uh, in, in this case, there were lots of people that made, let's say, second year and third year books on Flat Earth. Advanced stuff, but nobody was getting it. It was too tough to digest. Mm -hmm. I knew people that got into Flat Earth, they couldn't understand it, saw my stuff, then went back to the other stuff the older work, which was actually second year and third year books. And that's when, and then it just filled in this gap for them and it became this big wave. So again, right place at the right time and grateful for it. Absolutely. And I also believe in, in destiny, which is there has to be a reason for that this, that this happened the way it did. Uh, I tried deliberately to stay out of history's way for years. <laughs> No internet presence at all. I, but I taught technicals. You know, I I um I was a tech support guy for years, and the uh, and did my own thing for years. And then when this thing happened, it just like I, there was almost no effort on my part. Meaning, uh, and I've said this to other people, which is the um, if I ever live long enough to write an autobiography, it's going to be called unsolicited, because I didn't have to. Do, I never. I've done. I don't even know how many, 400, 500 interviews. I never had to pick up a phone. Mm -hmm. when, when does that happen? I don't have an agent. I don't, I don't have a marketing guy. I don't have a PR guy. I don't have any of this crap. I was the only guy, for example, that did that commercial in Australia that wasn't an actor. And it was like, why, why am I here exactly <laughs> doing this? It's, and it was because the, uh, the, the people that own that company, some of the people in the marketing department were flat earthers. So... <sighs> It, it's it's been fun it's been a really i mean seriously it's, it's been a, a totally wild ride i'm just trying to figure out what comes next that's what really i'm spending most of my time now is anticipating how this thing transforms and turns into something else but so. do you think it has to transform well it ha it'll have to because the world is transforming mm -hmm. now uh meaning we will have to adjust and who knows maybe this will be our crucible 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 <laughs> whatever this will well, this will be our trial by fire meaning <laughs> you know what whatever's coming next is going to, for the the conspiracy world it's going to be a defining moment for us because you'll get to find out who's who's really into conspiracies and who's not who's the armchair the weekend conspiracy people and mm -hmm. who are the the people that are there every day putting in the time because again we're running into a, kind of a weird crossroads which we the conspiracy world's been expecting mm -hmm. and uh don't you think that more and more people um, become maybe, yeah, armchair weekend uh, conspiracy theorists now with the COVID, et cetera, yeah. et cetera? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing that. Well, heck, I'm seeing that in the, the Christian community already. The, the Christian community has been waiting for the, um, uh, the whole, I don't want to get into this too much, the, the whole mark of the beast system thing that's been along around for a long time but i've been seeing them drop off i mean i i did an entire series of videos last year uh 2020 uh, tons of rants on this and i said look people will drop off mostly because of convenience more than anything it's like well i want to see the grandkids well i gotta go to the hospital well i want to go see the the football game and just and what slowly but surely they start falling off and, that, and that's just in the Christian community. Imagine the conspiracy world, same sort of thing. So it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting climax to the movie. <laughs> and um, yeah, my last, my very last, so I, I hadn't planned on uh, asking you about this, but I just wanted your um, opinion on this. Mm -hmm. One of the ideas that I want to argue ultimately in my uh, dissertation maybe um, would be that uh, so conspiracy theories are mostly prominent in the US, right? That's like yes, the, the place to be to be a conspiracy theorist. And yeah. I wanted to know whether you, uh, well, rather, to what extent would you agree to the statement that conspiracy theories and their narratives uh, constitute a sort of mythology maybe for the American people? Because uh, even those who don't uh, particularly engage with the conspiracy theories 
they know the stories, they know the characters. And right. do you think there's like a sort of narrative scheme that comes back in multiple conspiracy theories? Be- I'm asking you because you know all of them. And yeah, so maybe well, America on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the in the early days, the conspiracies. Well, that's not even true. America's always had the best conspiracies. We're the best, seriously, at lying. <laughs> our <laughs> lies, our lies are outlandish. They are huge. The bigger, the and better. <laughs> they are. Yeah, we. I mean, come on. We're 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 not what we used to be. We're still the greatest show on earth. You know, America has always been that way. We take things too far. We, you know, always, we will take things to the extreme and then only try to pull back after some of the damage has been done. I mean, come on. We used to sell morphine and Coke in the drug stores. We used to sell machine guns in the hardware stores, you know, going, and this is years ago, right? We, we did stupid things all the time. God, we did horrible things. And, and most of the time it was for money, for, for greed, for power. Um, but think of the, the big American conspiracies that are out there, that have been out there for a long time. Um, Pearl Harbor, great one. You know, was it deliberate? You know, was it not? Uh, the, the moon landing, everyone knows that one. JFK. Uh, JFK, of course. You know, the, the famous lone gunman killing a lone gunman, which killed the president. Uh, the, the, the Twin Towers, 9-11 always a always a big conspiracy uh all perpetrated against our our own groups but but also look at the look at the other stuff i'll let me go into this for a minute which is look at every the stuff that the news doesn't even touch which is every war that we've ever had right we've there has always been we spun it because we always the america wants to be the good guys we want to wear the white hats not the black hats no one wants to be the bad guy America's notorious. We we are bat, we are a villain that wears white clothes. A That's what we clothing. But pretty much. Not e- yeah. And, and and so yeah, don't don't ever trust anything that we say ever. Because well, a, a great example would be like most people, this ties to France. Right? It's like, oh, it's like why how how did we get this country? Oh, uh, the colonists, they beat off Britain. It's like, no. No, it was the French. <laughs> I got the French. The French was the ones that beat off Britain. I go. That's that's why. That's why the Louisiana Territory. Most of the United States was called Louisiana. Mm-hmm. We had to buy all our land back from you guys, right? No, we don't. We don't focus on that at all. It's like, why do you think Canada was split between England and France? <laughs> why do you think there is a place called Montreal? Does that make sense to you, at all? Um, the the war of 1812 was was just another extension of that but then you get into stuff like um like uh the the um real quick like the spanish american war mm-hmm. which was we we took the philippines guam puerto rico and we you know was completely lied about how that was going uh we took oh, the biggest land grab where we sacrificed the alamo right and we get oh let's see uh, the state of New Mexico, state of Arizona, Texas, and oh, I don't know, California. <laughs> <laughs> Trillions of dollars in real estate. Uh, and we just passed that off. Uh, Vietnam War was, was, was about controlling part of the drug trade, and we blamed it on communism. Then, then we moved over to Afghanistan. <laughs> Afghanistan is the biggest poppy field in the world. Everybody knows it. No one wants to talk about it. It's like, oh, we're fight- freedom, freedom everything my our flag seriously might just might as well have a big freedom on it big big block letters so sorry uh to get back to your thing the uh, there is a stigma to american conspiracies but really what else are the other ones out there you know what i mean who who else has any name name me three other giant conspiracies in the world that are publicized you know other than like the reichstag fire Right out of Germany, <laughs> it's like where they you know burn down their own parliament building to 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 blame it on another group. Um, my favorite, though, I know you're getting tired. No, 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 not at all. I'm listening. You, you sure? Oh my, yeah. My sure. my favorite. Well, it's late where you are. Isn't it like midnight? Uh, yeah, in ten minutes, but I don't care. <laughs> okay, okay. So my favorite was the Panama Canal. 
And in fact, I, it's an exclusive. I'm the guy that even came up with this one. You're know, like, Panama Canal is not a conspiracy. And by the way, you were the people that started it, which we'll <laughs> get into in a second, which was uh, people like you do a big engineering project, like a dam or something, or build a building. People die in construction accidents, right? They fall off things, trucks turn over and stuff and stuff. Like the, the, one of our bigger dams, I think we lost 70 guys during the building of it. It takes years to build and... You know, it happens. Cost of doing business. Do you know how many people died during the making of the Panama Canal? Americans? Better part of 6,000. You're thinking, wow, that's a lot. And until so I say why. And I say, well, they died from malaria and yellow fever. And you're like, wow, that's just what happens. It's the jungle. People die of malaria and yellow fever. And I go, yeah, but what if we knew they were going to die? Okay? And we just kept sending them. And you say, well, you wouldn't have known that. You wouldn't have known that 6,000 people would have died. I go, yeah, we would have because we didn't start the Panama Canal. France did. Fran the French, you guys started this in the late 1800s and you didn't even know what mosquito repellent and mosquito netting was. <laughs> you just went down there and you <laughs> had people dropping everywhere. You guys lost 20, 21,000, 22,000 men at some point. So much so that they started revolting. In, in all these mothers over in Paris are like, what the hell? <laughs> it's like, it's like, what are you doing? You guys, we're, we're sending people over there and they're not coming back. So where's the conspiracy? The conspiracy is when you're the Americans and you know full well what the ratio is. If you're talking to a guy, it's not even military guys. You're talking to a guy and you, the guy across from you, you're saying, oh yeah, by the way, will you tell him there's a one in eight chance he's going to die? <laughs> No, you're not no. going to tell him anything. I'm not going to tell him anything. So you just send the guys down there. Is it illegal? No. Is it unethical? Uh, <laughs> maybe. But at the same time, it's, again, this is the, the greater good. Did you accomplish what you wanted to accomplish? Yes, you did. You, I mean, there's a reason why you guys were after it, which was it's the, the greatest toll road in the history of toll roads. It is a military choke point. It is strategically priceless and it'll make you a lot of money because we charge a lot of money <laughs> to, to, to get boats to go through there because it saves a lot of time. And again, would I have done the same thing? Maybe, maybe because you, you do the odds. It's like, okay, how, what's our cap? How many men can we lose before we call this thing off? It's like 9,000, 10,000. Well, okay, well, let's get this thing down there. Is that, an, a, you know, again, comes down to what we consider to be an atrocity. Governments and corporations see as opportunity. And so it's, yeah, I, I can't, I, nobody talks about this one. I came up with this completely on my own. It's the very definition of a conspiracy that where people conspired to not tell the people. It's like, it's a great thing. We'll pay you a lot of money. You could go down to the jungle and dig this big, long trench with bulldozers and it'll be great and then you realize it's like yeah but two of my friends have already died and it's like, yeah it was a it was a fluke don't worry about it so anyway sorry what was the original question just the uh question was um to interpret conspiracy theories in the u.s as a sort of mythology but for the u.s themselves like as a bonding narrative because like, you know, in Europe, we all, I've, um, on the cultural um, aspect of our civilizations, we all have Greek and Roman mythologies. Right. There are the stories, they, they have uh, repeating narrative schemes and repeat. So there's always the god or goddess and then there's right. a human that does something and then they interact and then someone, somebody wins, et cetera, et cetera. And I... I have the intuition that maybe conspiracy theories have such an enduring success in the U.S. that it, it has this kind of bonding effect on the American people that because you guys don't really have this connection to the Greek and Roman mythology, the, like the stories that you, that you have growing up, they're the conspiracy theories. They're not about uh, Hades or Zeus. Yeah. You know you're what right. I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. And the closest we have to that, and I'm staring at one right now because uh, I I used to own a comic book shop a long time ago. You did? That's a, amazing. Uh, yeah. I long, love long, comic books. 
It's, I'm a huge fan. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I've, name it. I mean, I've watched just about every superhero television thing and movie thing you can think of. But I'm staring at the Justice League, um, a thing a guy made for me uh, mm -hmm. years ago. So, but you're absolutely right. We inadvertently created them. We didn't, you're right. We didn't latch on to, so we have a, we, two tiers of mythology. The first tier would be the superheroes, but it's in a different format. So uh, Superman, of course, would be Zeus or Apollo. A Wonder Woman would be Hera. Batman is Hades. Aquaman is uh, um, Poseidon. Mercury would be um, Hermes, which is the Flash, and so on and so on. All these were created by different people and forming them together. Yes, we inadvertently created some of the Greek gods, but we did that in this sort of American way, so, like we always do. The fast food of the, <laughs> of the gods, the, the mythological <laughs> gods, which was, okay, we'll turn them into little, little comic books and sell them for 10 cents, you know, at the, at the corner drugstore. Uh, but the set, you're right. The second level of mythology does come from the, the conspiracies we create. Yeah. Yeah, these weird tales of of uh, of not necessarily a conflict. Yeah, it is a conflict of good and evil, but it's not, but it's not sanctioned by the government. So it's these weird. Yeah, it's the weird legends. It's a it's like folklore and folk it is. tales. Yeah. It is, but so some people believe and some don't, but the JFK thing are probably the most famous of them because it, it involves a single person mm -hmm. which way, and, and so many theories swirling around it. And it's different from normal folklore in that there's not just one ending and one outcome. Mm -hmm. Depending on who you talk to, it's like, well, I think he was, there's so many different theories on how, who did JFK and why. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the other, the other ones too. Yes, we create our own mythology. Absolutely, we do. Uh, because we took, because we, we corporate, corporatized the, <laughs> the other ones. <laughs> I mean, come on. Superman is a brand. <laughs> Wonder Woman is a, is a freaking brand. They're lunchboxes, they're, they're movies you watch, they're, they're videos, they're toys. The comic um, books themselves. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, where, whereas the other stuff, because we're so new compared to other countries, you know, we're only 244 years old, 43 years old. The um, uh, the the stuff we come up with, yeah, we don't have a lot of them, but they are out there, no mm -hmm. question. Uh, but yeah, good good point. We we, you're absolutely right. We it is a it's more folklore than mythology. But it, again, if you wait, if you let it go long enough, it will become a mythology. It'll become some weird story, and it'll be changed in some way. You know, as as the grapevine changes things. But yeah, yeah, I can see that. Okay. Thank you. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, go figure. Yeah, I, again, I'm looking at the, I'm a big fan. If you if you never have seen it, I'm sure you've seen his art. Look up a, an artist called Alex Ross. And, but you could just type in Alex Ross comics into, mm -hmm. or artwork into Google and just hit images. And he was a painter in the style of a Norman Rockwell. Mm -hmm. And he started... Uh, shortly he, he started back in the 90s and he the stuff that he made was so amazing he was so photorealistically good imagine if norman rockwell created superheroes and he got so good that that after a while i think i think it's still there when they got to the awards comic awards every year like best painter they just stopped giving him the award they basically told him they said look as long as you're alive, you have it. You, you have it. So <laughs> when you die, then we'll because no one could even come close. And no one I've never seen that in anything, any category ever. You know, it's like <laughs> you're finding me an actor. It's like, yeah, as long as you're alive, you get best actor award. No. He's <laughs> he's that good. But but his specialty was the the DC universe. And yeah, he did stuff for Marvel, but he again he treated the, like you were just saying, the DC universe, he goes, he goes, those are the Greek gods. He goes, the Marvel Universe, they're just street gangs by comparison. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah, you have Thor, the whole, you know, the Norse guys. But other than Thor, everybody else is just, you know, they had to invent brand new, you know, things in the Marvel Universe to, to make it more interesting. So, so you're more of a DC fan then? I am. I, in fact, the, the, the four prints that I have on my wall, this one, the two in the hallway, three in the hallway over there. And that thing up there, the um, uh, they're all they're all Justice League. 
They're all uh, look up on if you ever get a chance to 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 watch or buy it. Um, an Alex, there's an Alex Ross book called Kingdom Come. No, I'll make it for you. <laughs> Hang on, it's called Kingdom Come, and it is stunning. It'll blow your mind. If you're, if you're, oh, where are you? Kingdom Come. Yeah, here it is. I'll give you the wiki entry for it. It is amazing. It blew my mind when I first saw it. There it is. Thank See, you. can you can is is that clickable? Yep, it is. I'm on the wiki page right now. Yeah, it is a wonderful thing to watch. If you can buy the individual things, that's great. If you can uh, uh, buy the the graphic novel, awesome. But it's totally oh, it's amazing. So yeah, I mean, I I love again. Yeah, you're absolutely right though. The, no American knows the the Greek gods at all. We don't know any of the old stories. Uh, in fact, I had to retroactively, you know, when I was younger, it's like, oh yeah, Superman. And it's like, wait a minute, he sounds a lot like these other guys. <laughs> and, and but then you realize that the other people that were um, like even Green Lantern, that's straight out of Solomon, the the signet of Solomon and the ring, uh, Hawkman, that's from the Egyptian gods. Uh, Adam, I don't think Adam's really anybody. But yeah, it's amazing. They were all created separately, but then they band, you know, came together. It's like, oh yeah, I know that, that adds group. Up nicely. <laughs> yeah, it's like go figure. How 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 convenient. <laughs> so, but yeah, there's a lot of we tend to we change. Sometimes we can make some cool things, but at the same time, I don't see anything wrong with it necessarily of of the the Justice League because it got through to a lot of people, and there's a lot of worldwide people that would finally make the connection later subliminally they're uh, they're figuring it out so did you by the way if you did you see the zach snyder cut yet of the justice league no i'm much more of a marvel fan i'm sorry oh <laughs> no that's fine no 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 much no, more of a marvel no. fan and why wouldn't you people forget <laughs> that the dc universe they started it you know the superman movies were out in the 70s and uh, batman's movies were out in the 80s Wonder Woman television series and all this stuff. Marvel took forever. They were they didn't they didn't get going until the nineties, and then they lucked out. Um, Robert Downey Jr. when he did Iron Man, uh, that's did like two thousand and nine. That's much later. Way later, and in a very short amount of time, they said, "Let's just hit this thing with everything we got," and they did. <laughs> they got because you know the actors get older, and it's like we yeah. got to get these things out. It's like we get everybody get their own movie. We got to get an Avengers movie and a second one, and then we'll final, and then everyone can quit. And to the to the point where you know uh, Captain America quit. You know, after we have Endgame. Robert, <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. quit, and they wrote it in the script. It's like okay, you know, they want to they want to do other things. So no, the Marvel <laughs> universe was wonderful. Uh, if I know it's before your time, but if you want some, the, do you remember the Blade series? No. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> you, you and I, you and I will have to talk again. If you have <laughs> questions along these lines, um, look up. Oh, this was the, this was the movie that made the, the Marvel universe possible. So Blade, the franchise, eh, maybe I'll give you the Blade, the film series, the DVD. Yeah. So this was their first delving into it. This was 1998. <laughs> and people... That's the year people, I was born. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So the... Um, uh, because people are saying, oh, Black Panther, it's the first... It's the first black superhero, blah, blah, blah. It's like, what are you talking about? Blade was a freaking trilogy. <laughs> and it was a mainstream trilogy. And it was done by Marvel. And so it was like, oh, okay, fine. Disney wants to. Yes, but it's the not the. Um, it's not part of the MCU, so that's. <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. It's like that doesn't matter if it was part of the MCU or not. These were these three movies. First of all, they're vampire movies, and he's a vampire hunter. These were the ones that they and they were all rated R. The uh, they were they. This was what Marvel realized. It's like, hey, maybe we can make money off of this stuff. So, I mean, you see how close, like 2004 was the last one they did. And that one had um, Jessica Biel and Ryan Reynolds in it. Uh, it was, anyway, if you have a chance, if you're a big fan of the MCU, check these things out because the MCU owes everything to that. I'll definitely check them out. Yeah. I'll definitely anything, them. anything else I can answer for you? <laughs> um, I 
for sure did not have any other questions. I think we might be done. <laughs> okay. Send me the um send me the audio of this when you get the yeah, chance. Sure. Yeah, I'd of love course. To have it. Um, if you need any references, because I know this is important, because you're going for your dissertation with this, mm -hmm. uh, send me whatever you need, whatever links. If you can think of something, it's like, hey, because I, it, it, hey, I'd love to see you do this, pull <laughs> pull this off, and and why not? I mean, it's a, it's it's off the beaten track, and there's enough references out there in mainstream media. I'll send you some, you know, playlists as far as relevance. Oh, sh oh, sure, yeah, that would be awesome. All right, I'll I'll send those to you as soon as we're done. And uh, unless you can think of anything else, you have a good night. Send me the audio in the for morning. For sure, yeah. Thank you so much for all of your time. It was amazing talking to you. <laughs> Very welcome. And you have a great rest of your evening. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye.